Hey everyone, how's it going? But before we get started, I want to give a big shout out to this video's sponsor, Nino Kuni Cross Worlds. Now, if the name Nino Kuni sounds familiar to you, you may remember it as one of the biggest critically acclaimed RPGs of the PS3 generation, along with its sequel, which released a few years later. And now, Cross Worlds brings that very same experience into the palm of your hand through your iPhone, Android, or Windows PC. You can probably already tell, but this game has an absolutely gorgeous art style, with FMV anime cutscenes heavily inspired by Studio Ghibli, and it also includes many select soundtracks composed by the legendary Joe Hisaishi. Now, the game itself is very expansive, in-depth, and user-friendly MMORPG, and with a ton of customization options to make your character stand out. You can also invite your friends to join you on your adventure too, regardless of which platform they're on. This game is already a huge hit in Japan, and will soon become a worldwide phenomenon with this release, so definitely be sure to check it out. It's going to be free to play, and you can pre-register right now using the link down below in the description. I want to give a big thanks to Nino Kuni Cross Worlds for sponsoring this video, and now, let's get back to the video. Nino Kuni Cross Worlds Pre-register now. So, about a year and a half ago, I uploaded a video about Megaton Challenge Runs that I encouraged other people to try and may or may not do myself in the future, and one of the ones I talked about was a Minimum Battles Challenge. This is an idea I got from a YouTuber called JRose11, who does Pokemon challenges mostly of the Generation 1 games, and one of the ones he does often is with certain Pokemon and only doing mandatory battles. He's done it with Mewtwo, Dragonite, Alakazam, and even Ghastly, if you can believe that. So, if you like my channel and you like these games, I highly recommend you check him out. But anyway, when I heard that SMT Nocturne HD was adding a new easy difficulty called Merciful, I was expecting it to be a thing that kind of eases in new players to the gameplay of SMT, kind of like Fellow Mode and SMT4. But when I played it, this was way easier than I was expecting. Like, it wasn't Merciful, it was more like Game Journalist difficulty, as I like to call it. Like, you would have to actively be trying to let the enemies kill you to actually lose, and even then, it'd be a challenge. Now, if you're one of those people that likes to play all your games on easy difficulty, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm someone that likes to be challenged. A lot of people have been asking when I'm going to finish my Velvetless playthrough of Persona 5 Royal, which I will, but... <sighs> that's just one of the easiest games I've ever played in my life. But, getting back on topic, I never saw myself getting any use out of Merciful Mode unless I was experimenting, and that's exactly what I was doing here. In fact, I wasn't even planning on making this into a video, but I recorded the whole thing, so I figured, why not? Rather than do a challenging playthrough of a Mega 10 game that would take me dozens of hours, why not just play on the easiest difficulty to see how fast I can do it while only doing required battles? And what a better candidate for that than Nocturne HD on Merciful Difficulty. This isn't necessarily a speedrun, because speedrunners do whatever they need to get through the game as fast as possible, but I will be mindful of the time I invest into the game. I'm not going to be going out of my way to get treasure or anything like that, I'm just going to be blasting through on Merciful, doing the bare minimum, and only going out of my way to prepare when it's convenient. Now, the rules are pretty self-explanatory. This is a minimum battles challenge, meaning I'm not allowed to engage in any battles unless they're required. Whenever I get into a random encounter, I have to immediately retreat. I can't fight or recruit demons, so that'll definitely be interesting, and if a boss is optional, I have to skip it, which means the true demon ending is also a no-go. That being said though, I'm not going to make it so that I have to get the regular demon ending because I still want to get an actual, you know, satisfying ending, so I guess you could say I'm making an exception for Kagutsuchi, so take that as you will. I'm also going to have a counter on screen that shows how many battles I've fought. Alright, so the prologue pretty much goes how I expect it to. I do the whole introductory segment, get off the train, meet Hijiri, meet Chiaki and Isamu at the hospital, the apocalypse happens, Lucifer makes me swallow a giant silverfish, blah blah, and then I go through the elevator door and do the tutorial. The first battle is against the two Willow Wisps, which do almost nothing and both go down in one hit, so yeah, then the one against the Preta, which goes down in two hits, and then the two Kodamas, which go down in one hit, so that makes three battles so far. And because you gain an insane amount of experience in Merciful Mode, Demi Fiend is already a level 4, and as for my build, I'm pretty much going to be doing it SMT4 style and investing solely in one stat, that being Strength. On Merciful Mode, your defenses and evasion are high enough as it is, so all I really need to do is invest in my damage. So I go upstairs to the Skywalk, meet the Pixie, and recruit her, and yeah, with this being a minimum battles challenge, this Pixie is going to be my only demon for a while, because like I said earlier, recruiting counts as battling, and I can't do that. 
Now, in order to progress, I gotta get the key card, which I need to beat three Predis to get. And I try to recruit one, but this doesn't work, so I just kill them instead, making this my fourth battle. And once it's all over, I am level five, and my pixie is level three. And yeah, that's the only required battle in this area until the boss, which is Fornius. And yeah, I don't even need to try to beat Fornius. I set the game to auto battle, and Demifiend and Pixie together are doing around 80 damage each turn while he's doing less than five when his attacks hit, which only happens twice throughout the whole battle. But anyway, we're now done with the hospital, and so far we have five battles. So I go to Yoyogi Park, ask Pixie to stay with me, which she does, and thank God for that option, because if she couldn't, that would be very bad. But I then make my way to Shibuya. Now here, you have to make sure you don't talk to any of the NPC demons, because sometimes they'll initiate combat without warning, which here is an automatic reset. The first one that comes to mind is the Nekomata in the bar that asks if you want to do something naughty and then attacks you if you say yes. We do need to go to the bar to meet up with Chiaki though, but nothing else. And you also need to visit the Cathedral of Shadows, because once you've done both these things, Hijiri will appear in the terminal and he'll send you to the Amala network. Now, this dungeon is pretty annoying, mainly because the guide I'm using isn't entirely clear, but the only mandatory battle here is against the Spectres. Now, this fight may look imposing because it's 6 against 2, but you should never underestimate the power Merciful Difficulty gives you. This is also the first battle where I actually use buffs since Rakunda hitting them all definitely helps me to take them out faster, but because I still don't have any multi-target attacks, I just have to take them out one at a time. Once you take out a couple, they'll come together and form a giant specter, but it's still easy, and I can easily auto-battle them to death. And once I beat them, Demifiend gains 5 levels, and not only does Pixie gain a bunch of levels, but she evolves into High Pixie. But yeah, I go out the door, wind up in the first Kalpa, watch the cutscene, leave, and then wind up in Ginza. And there's not much I can do at the moment, but there is Rag's Jewelry, and from him you can buy Matamas and Element Demons if you have the right stones. Which I don't right now, but I'll make note of this place for when I do find more. But yeah, like I said, not much to do here, so I head to Harumi Warehouse, and then the Ginza Underpass. By the time I get here and save, we're at just under an hour of playtime. But anyway, I buy some Magatama from the shop, talk to the Collector Mannequin who says he'll let us pass if we get the thousand yen bill, so we go back to Ginza to steal it from Loki, and on the way out we're caught by the troll and we have to fight him. Now, the troll likes to spam Mabafu and Berserk. Normally, the ideal strategy is to charm him or daze him or something since he's weak to mind, but I don't have any of those moves, so I just handle it like any other fight. I take the first turn to debuff his defense once, just to make things go a bit faster, and with auto battle on, he goes down in a total of four turns. I also think it's worth mentioning that if you talk to Loki in the bar, he'll sell you the bill for 20 million Maka, but this is literally impossible to obtain, even if you use cheats to give yourself that much Maka. But yeah, I trade the bill for the mannequin's letter, go through the door, and get the first of two mandatory fiend fights, the fight against Matador. Again, you may think this will be hard since my only demon right now is still High Pixie, but remember, merciful difficulty mode. As expected, he leads off with Red Capote, getting his hit and evasion rate all the way up, but no, yeah, my attacks are still hitting. I'm basically just debuffing his defense with High Pixie and attacking with Demi Fiend, and I'm hitting all of my attacks. Him, on the other hand, well, he actually misses a few times. The only thing that's kind of a problem is a focused Andalusia, but this can easily be healed off. It's just that a turn I spend healing is a turn I can't attack. But he eventually takes a break from spamming this, and I'm able to take him out pretty easily. So that wraps up our 8th battle, and you know, when I can beat one of the most notoriously hard bosses in the series that easily without even debuffing his evasion, and with only two party members, I think that really shows how much of a difficulty gap there is between Merciful and Normal mode. But yeah, I make it out of the tunnel and make it to Ikebukuro, and this place is the same deal as Shibuya, where many of the NPC demons want to fight you. But what's good about this place is that once you make it to Ikebukuro, you have access to the Demon Compendium, meaning I can not only rebuy my original Pixie, but I can now fuse them together to create the elemental Eros and rebuy both of them, meaning that I now have a full party of four. Unfortunately, arrows can only rank fairies down, so I won't be able to keep upgrading my demons with him, and this will be my party for quite some time, but I'm just glad to have a full party. But anyway, I do the thing where I go into the Mantra HQ, Isamu gets beat up by Thor, and Thor hits him so fast that Isamu is still talking while he's getting hit. There's more- no. Hey, you gotta help me. We don't have time to waste here. Our teacher, 
she's but then we're arrested and have to prove ourselves innocent by fighting a series of three consecutive bosses. The first of which being an Orthrus, who goes down after just three turns of nothing but normal attacks. The next one, Yaxini, I have to spend a few turns healing up from the last fight, but I still take her out in less than three turns with a few normal attacks. The next and final one of this part, Thor, I actually take a little more seriously. I debuff his defense a few times and I also start using Lunge, which actually does a lot more than I was expecting it to in comparison to my normal attack, and he also uses Zeodyne, which doesn't hit and I'm able to take him out pretty quickly with my physical moves. We're not done with Ikebukuro just yet though. The next battle is the second mandatory fiend fight, Dante, because I chose to play in Maniacs mode since I already played Chronicle for my original video. Although skill names and models aside, there's no difference between them, and the AI is still the same. There's not much point in stacking debuffs with how often he's programmed to go for Holy Star, and he also goes for Provoke at the end, but even with my defense at minus two, his attacks don't do anywhere near enough to pose a threat. And Demifiend does over 900 with a single lunge, and then Pixie kills him with a kiss. But yeah, we're now at level 20 and only at 12 battles, and there is no sign that things are going to start getting harder anytime soon. So we go to Gozu Tenno, he increases our demon stock, not that we need it, and then we can save some time by jumping down. Yeah, I didn't know this before, but apparently rather than taking the elevator, you can just jump down. It does damage you, but I mean the Fountain of Life is right there. But anyway, we head to the Assembly of Nilo, and there are a lot of mandatory mini-bosses here. The first of which is against an Incubus and a Kappa Tengu. They're basically normal enemies, but the Tengu can summon allies, and it does before I take him out. So this fight takes a little longer, but my Pixie learns Medea after the fight, which is definitely helpful. After that, I have to fight two Illigors twice in a row. The first one summons a Dis as an ally, and the second one summons a Yaka. Both of these Illigors are actually pretty easy though, because despite having a decent amount of health for a mini boss, they're weak against electricity, and Zeo is an attack that both Eros and High Pixie have, so yeah, pretty easy. The one after this is a Barith and two Succubi, who attacks you because you took one of the Keelas and he offers to let you go if you give it back, but even if you say yes, he'll still attack, so no way around this fight. But anyway, I'm able to take out the two Succubi before they can do anything, and after getting a lucky shock and wailing on him with a series of critical hits, I take him out easily in just three turns. On the next floor, you have to retrieve the key from a Kai Wan, and he goes into this area with a series of doors. Open the wrong one, and you have to fight another enemy, which in this case is an automatic reset, but thankfully there is a save point nearby. It does take me a few attempts, but after a few resets, I do find him on my first try, and then fight him. Now, there's three of them, and they know magic, which is something I didn't realize until a few turns in, but this battle is still easy. By this point, I have Heat Wave, so I make use of that, and I take them all out on the same turn. The last boss of the assembly is Osei, and it goes exactly how you'd expect. He's just spamming a barrage of weak physical attacks while I'm doing way more, and he goes down in like a minute with no effort at all. Man, how many battles was that? Like six? We were at 12 before, and now we're at 18 and level 27, with a lot more moves. But yeah, before the fight, the assembly launched their super powerful laser weapon thingy, which seems to screw up the mantra HQ, and then we see what Chiaki and Isamu are up to. Chiaki asks if I support her idea of a world ruled by the strong, and at this point I've pretty much decided that I want to do her reason because outside of the true demon ending, this is probably the one that I support the most. Isamu then gets out of jail, Gozu Tenno dies, and next we have to go to Kabukicho prison. At the start of this place there is an easy mandatory battle against the Naga who goes down in just one hit, and then I have to do the puzzles, which are kind of a pain in the Mara and would take ages if I wasn't religiously following a guide. Even the guide isn't really all that clear, and I actually make a few mistakes, which probably adds a couple minutes, but before the boss, I'm at just under three hours of playtime, which compared to my previous runs of this game is ridiculous. But yeah, the boss we gotta fight here is Mizuchi, and I pretty much handle it like any other boss. You know, debuff, attack, heal, etc. The only thing that's different about it is that he has Mirage, which may confuse my party, but thankfully my high pixie has Mipatra. This thing also surprisingly does a lot of damage. Not enough to pose a threat by any means, but compared to what the other bosses have been doing, this is quite a lot. He also gets weaker as the battle goes on though, and it's only a couple minutes before he goes down. So after that, Isamu goes into the Amala network, we free the mannequins, and now we gotta head to Asakusa, which requires me to go through the Ikebukuro tunnel. Unfortunately, when I get there, I realize it's one of those caves where I need a flash HM, so I have to go to the Ginza underpass to buy some light balls, and while I'm at it, I also stop by Rags' jewelry to see if I can buy any demons from him. And yes, I can actually buy Flamus, 
who is actually a pretty good demon with decent elemental coverage and has Medea, so he will definitely make a good replacement for Pixie. But anyway, in Ikebukuro Tunnel, you're supposed to fight what I like to call the Oni Brothers, but they're not actually required, so I just go past them. In Asakusa, we meet Hijiri again, watch a few cutscenes to trigger the next story advance, and now we gotta go through the assembly of Nihilo's other entrance to get to the obelisk. And this is one of those dungeons that's pretty long, but there aren't any mandatory battles until the very end. At the top, we gotta do one of those moon puzzles, and during it, fight the three fates. These bosses by themselves are a complete joke, and they all run away before I beat them, so I don't gain any EXP. I'm not sure if I should count these as battles because I didn't actually beat them, but going by the rules that any form of engagement counts as a battle, I'm gonna say it does, so this brings me up to 23. But yeah, after that I gotta fight them all together. This is actually kind of a tricky battle, mainly because Lachesis knows Makarakarn and Tetracarn, along with a variety of debuffs, and there's also Clotho who can heal. I decide to focus on Lachesis first so I don't have to deal with the reflect moves, then Clotho so I don't have to deal with the healing, and after that I easily take down Atropos. After that I get the cutscene with Yuko, she increases my demon stock, and now we gotta go back to the Amala network after Isamu, where we gotta fight the Spectres again. This is actually easier than the first attempt, because even though they have slightly stronger moves, they don't unionize, and they also have to drain my MP before they can do anything, and I actually do get kinda low on HP at the end, but luckily they don't kill me and I'm quickly able to take them out. So while there, Isamu gets some powers, we gotta watch some cutscenes to trigger the next story advance, then go help out Yuko in Yoyogi Park, and we have to get there through the back entrance. Surprisingly, throughout this entire segment, there isn't a single mandatory battle except for Giramakala at the end of Yoyogi Park, and in the save before the boss, it says we're at 4 hours and 42 minutes. Now, if you've played pretty much any other Mega Ten game, you should know that Giramakala reflects physical attacks, so yeah, all I can use is magic, which means Demifiend is pretty much useless for this entire fight. Overall, this is probably the hardest fight so far because not only do I have only weak magic attacks, but the boss is constantly going for Dakunda and applying debuffs of his own, which keeps prolonging the battle. Not to mention, his Blight actually does a decent amount, so I gotta keep healing. Eventually, he does go down, and after that, I have to fight Sakahagi, who goes down in one turn. Oh yeah, and even though that was two bosses, the battle wasn't over until I killed Sakahagi, so I'm just gonna count it as one. Oh, and after the fight, Demifiend gains six levels! Yeah, I think that may just be the most levels I've gained from any single battle so far, but since I'm pretty much maxed out in strength, I'm gonna start dumping my stats into whatever I think is relevant. Right now, it's agility and vitality, but I'm probably going to start investing in magic later. So we go back to Ikebukuro, watch Chiaki awaken to her demonic form, Hijiri goes to the Amala network himself, we chase him, and then we have to fight the Spectres again. Though this time, it's actually easier than the others. They're pretty much doing the same thing, only weaker, and one of them even goes for last resort. But yeah, not much to say, just pick them off one at a time, and it's over in a few minutes. Anyway, after that, we're teleported to the Amala Temple, and this dungeon is divided into three smaller temples. The Black Temple, the White Temple, and the Red Temple, and these are all pretty short and easy. The boss of the Black Temple is Alciel, who has a move that gets everyone down to 1 HP, and it's almighty, so you can't do anything to prevent it. Here, though, he pretty much just spams Tempest, which keeps missing, and while he's doing that, I'm just lowering his defense and spamming Divine Shot, which is doing a ton, and he goes down very easily. In the White Temple, I have to fight Albion, who has four minions. If you take out his minions, he'll revive them, and if you take him out, his minions will revive him. For this fight, you have to be a little strategic, even on merciful mode, but as long as you know what you're doing, it'll be extremely easy. I pretty much just lower their defense as much as I can, pick off the minions, and then finish him off with a Divine Shot. Now, Scotty in the Red Temple is probably the hardest one because she drains physical moves, which once again limits me to only using magic. She knows Makajama on, which causes Mute, and also Earthquake, which does a good amount of damage, and she also has buffs that she applies, as well as Dragon Eye, which... Yeah, this boss isn't hard, just more annoying. We're still able to take her down, although when we're done, High Pixie and Arrows are both very low on MP. So once we beat all the bosses, we can go to the fourth temple, Isamu uses Hijiri as a sacrifice to summon some god, and now we gotta go to Mifunashiro where the mannequins are being attacked by Chiaki. At the bottom, you get a choice of supporting Chiaki or Futomimi, and since I'm going for Chiaki's reason, I side with her and fight Futomimi as a boss. 
he's pretty much a joke. He mostly goes for focus and lunge, and it hardly does anything. Even on hard difficulty, this is an easy battle, and he dies after just three divine shots. I gain a ton of experience points, and now that I'm high enough level, High Pixie can evolve into Queen Mab. Now, Queen Mab is a decent enough demon as it is, but what's great about this is that because Queen Mab is a knight demon, I can now start fusing demons of different races. But not right now, because with her being higher level than me, I won't be able to buy her back for the compendium. So I just continue using the same party I have for now. I do buy Saki Matama though, so I can use her to fuse some skills into other demons later. But anyway, Chiaki transforms into Bale Avatar, and we just got locked into a reason. And at this point, we're currently at 31 battles, and the terminal says that we have just under 6 hours of total playtime. Which isn't speedrun numbers by any means, but for a casual minimum battles only run on Merciful, I'd say that's pretty impressive. I go through Yurikucho Tunnel to get to the Diet Building, and in the Diet Building, there are a few mandatory mini-bosses I need to fight. The first one is against Surt, who is basically just a heavy hitter with fire attacks, which on Merciful means absolutely nothing and goes down after two divine shots. The next one is against Mata, who, like Scotty, is immune to physical attacks, so it's pretty much the same strategy. Thankfully, he's not as strong and has much less HP, so he goes down in about two minutes. The next one is against Mott, the infamous Beast Eye Spammer, but thankfully that doesn't happen here. Actually, I don't think he gets to go for it a single time. In fact, he only gets one turn, which he goes for Makakaja twice, because immediately after that, I finish him off with a Zeo. Oh, and after the fight, Demifiend learns Force Boost and Tornado, so yeah, finally some decent magic moves. Anyway, the next fight is against Mithra. No, not that one. This Mithra has Dragon Eye and likes to go for insta-kill moves, but because this is merciful, they're pretty much impossible to hit. He also has no physical resistances, and because of this, he goes down from just two divine shots. So once we're done with that, we get to Hikawa performing some kind of ritual. Now, here I was expecting to fight Samael, but apparently if you choose not to interrupt him, you can actually skip that battle. This is a reason choice for Hikawa, but because I rejected him earlier, I can actually choose this option without getting his reason, which I do, allowing me to skip the Samael fight. But anyway, this is the last dungeon before the Tower of Kagutsuchi, and we're currently at 34 battles and 6.5 and hours of playtime. Now, before moving on to the last dungeon, I want to mess with Fusion a little bit, now that Demifiend is higher level than Queen Map. The party I go with is Dekarabia, Quetzalcoatl, and Queen Map, which I think together give me decent elemental coverage, healing, and buffing powers, and will definitely be more than enough to help me beat the Reason bosses. So I go to the Amala Temple to speak with Kagutsuchi, which triggers the next story advance. Go to the top of the obelisk and enter the tower. In the first part, the puzzles here are actually pretty easy and there aren't any mini-bosses. I make it to Aramon, and I have to do that dumb mini-game where he bans certain actions, and if you do any of them, you die. Thankfully, that's not too much of a problem, and even when he bans physical skills, I can still do decent damage with my magic skills. After about three or four turns of this, he changes forms and is now more like a normal battle. At this point, his defense is already at minus four, and without restrictions, I can hit him with a focused divine shot every turn, which does over 5,000 damage on a critical hit. My magic attacks are also doing a good amount of damage, and his, well, aren't, and it only takes me about three turns to beat him. So I go a little further through the next area, and I get to Isamu, who is probably the hardest and longest boss of the whole run. What he does is he uses Aurora, which changes his properties, where he reflects everything except for one element, that being the opposite of what he uses. In my original no buffs run, I just had Raido spam Tekisatsu every turn, which would always hit and do decent damage because he had Pierce. But because I don't have Dante or Raido, I have to do this the normal way. The problem here is that depending on what he changes to, I may or may not be able to do any solid damage. I'm only able to do any real damage when he's weak against wind and ice attacks, and another thing is that I also have to be mindful of my MP, which I do start to get low on later on, but thankfully I have some chakra drops. At least his attacks are hardly doing anything, but the fight still does take a long time, around 9 minutes, which is significantly longer than any other fight so far, but after a bunch of magic attacks, I am able to take Isamu down. Now, the area immediately after is basically a town. It has a shop and a fountain and a save point and everything, and while probably not necessary, I do decide to see what I could fuse, and I fuse Cerberus, just because he's one of my favorite demons. I also buy the Kailash Magatama, which doesn't have any skills that I'll be able to use, but it does provide a good stat boost. With it, Demifiend gets plus 2 strength and plus 10 magic, which is great. Surprisingly, there actually is a mandatory mini-boss in this part, Thor. 
He basically plays the same as he did in the Mantra HQ, only now he's higher level. It's pretty much a joke of a fight, and with Cerberus, I'm doing even more damage and getting more critical hits each turn thanks to Iron Claw. And he goes down after about a minute. So I go through the next area and get to Chiaki, and this is where I'm expecting her to just give me the stone and pass, but apparently even if you side with Chiaki in this game, you still have to fight her. Yeah, she wants to find out who is superior. I mean, we're on the same side, why do we need to fight? Well, since I do have to do this fight, I may as well explain how it goes. This is probably the easiest battle of the Kagatsuchi Tower. She doesn't have any major resistances, and her skill, Bale's Bane, is extremely inaccurate, even on higher difficulties. She also likes to spam insta-kill moves, which are pretty useless on Merciful. Once she's taken enough damage, she brings out Floros and Osei Hillel, who can buff and heal her. So I focus on taking out Osei first, which takes two Divine Shots, then I take out Floros, who goes down from one Divine Shot followed by an Iron Claw, and then a couple turns shooting and clawing later, she goes down after about four minutes. So yeah, that was the fight against Chiaki. I wasn't expecting to fight her, and I know you don't have to fight Hikawa or Isamu in their reasons, so why is that different here? I suppose it's my fault for not doing my research, but it still seems really weird that I would have to fight my own ally in this alignment and not the others. So yeah, that was battle number 39. If you're doing Hikawa's, Isamu's, or the demon ending reasons, then you need 38 battles to get up to this point. But if you're doing Chiaki's like I did, it's 39. But anyway, that was the last reason, boss, and it is now time to go up and fight Kagutsuchi. Once I'm at the top floor, I save at the terminal, and we are now at level 66 with 7 hours and 36 minutes of playtime. I know we're not done, but it is still crazy to think that we have almost beat this game in under 8 hours, and I'm gonna try to see if I can keep it that way. So I go up the elevator, and the fight against his first form starts, and I pretty much handle it the same way I handled Hikawa and Chiaki debuff his defense and attack, and once his defense is all the way down, attack and heal. Cerberus is doing about 1500 to 2000 damage with Iron Claw, and Demifiend is doing around 3500 with a focused Divine Shot. My other demons are doing anywhere from 500 to 1500 depending on the number of hits. This form is mostly a complete joke, he doesn't even get a chance to go for Vast Light during his second form. Now, if you haven't seen it, in my Nocturne No Buff series, I literally could not survive Kagatsuchi's Infinite Light because it was doing over a thousand damage at normal attack. The only way I was able to beat him was by grinding all the way to level 255 and steamrolling him before he could beat me. Now, even though we're on Merciful, I don't want to underestimate him, so I lower his attack with Warcry once. The next turn, he goes for it, and I get my first and only party member death of the entire run, where he takes out Cerberus with his infinite light. I thought about just starting over, but I still have Queen Mab in my reserve, so I summon her instead. Anyway, Demifiend is still doing the same amount of damage he was in the first form, and aside from infinite light, his attacks really aren't doing anything. I'm not really sure how much faster this fight would have gone if I still had Cerberus, but after a few turns, I'm able to finish his second form off after about 5 minutes with a critical divine shot that does exactly 6,000 damage. So we get the dialogue, and then we're sent in what looks like somewhere in Death Valley. Chiaki congratulates me, then we see a bunch of buildings rise up from the ground, and then the credits roll. Yeah, not gonna lie, that ending was kinda lame. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We beat SMT Nocturne on Merciful Difficulty in just under 8 hours, and the minimum amount of battles required to beat the game is 40. If you're doing Chiaki's ending, if you're doing Isamu's, Hikawa's, or the Demon ending, then you only need 39. But yeah, this was kind of a short video compared to my other challenges. Like I said, this wasn't originally planned to be a video, but I figured this would be a good bonus thing since I haven't really done much with Nocturne HD since it came out, and maybe this will encourage other challenges and or speedruns in the future. As always, be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my other links in the description, and if you want to support me financially, consider leaving a Ko-Fi donation. Till the next video, I will see y'all later.